I first got involved with HHT uh, out of an experience in my training working in a lab that was studying mice with HHT. At the same time as I was seeing patients with various heart and blood vessel disorders, I was working at a center at the University of Utah where they were already seeing HHT patients in their center of excellence. So I began to see the heart patients that that center was seeing. Oh, there's so many interesting aspects of taking care of patients with HHT. Um, but I think one of the most rewarding and interesting things for me is that you're taking care of not just the patient in front of you, but their entire extended family. We're interested in several research projects, but I'd say that our, our main interest is trying to understand how individuals have, they may come from the same family and they have such a varied experience with HHT. We have one family in Utah with uh, a we understand the original family member came to Utah in 1840s, potentially has something like 10,000 descendants. We see hundreds of them at our center, and they have completely different uh, experiences with HHT. Same gene. So our research interest is to understand how HHT can be so different from one person to the next with the same genetic source problem that might be environmental things that are different. We believe that other genes that differ from one person to the next modify what happens in HHT and, and give someone a mild experience and someone else a severe uh, experience with the same, from the same family. I think that if you're taking care of HHT patients and working at a center, it, it's very natural to start working with Cure HHT. Um, as an organization, they've been tremendous in supporting us, uh, it's a two-way interaction. Um, we hear about patients, we have patients sent our way from Cure HHD, and we're committed to this patient population, and Cure HHD is the face of our patients. In the future, I hope that we see for our HHD patients more of what we have been seeing recently, um, that there are more tools and more options, and we're transforming the disease. I'll give you an example. Um, nose bleeding is an obvious severe problem, and there will always be, there have always been patients who have really severe nosebleeds. One of the treatments that we turn to to rescue someone from life-threatening bleeding is called Young's procedure, where you surgically sew the nose shut so that air can't pass through, and that, when done properly, causes bleeding to stop. With drug treatments that are effective, like Avastin, um, we're now seeing a much, we hardly ever need to send patients to have Young's procedure done. We still know it works, we've hardly had to use it. So in the future, I hope there are more stories like that, that something that has always been a problem now has multiple solutions.